you guys know what time it is. Deontay, the bronze bomber wilder, Tyson Fury, the gypsy king, part two, Las Vegas, Nevada. We get into it right here, right now. Exaggeration and experience, your boy JG. Let's go. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. This is your boy JG, Exaggeration and Experience. We still got the same name, but we're working on some things. We're updating the channel, but we won't get into it right now. There's a big fight coming up, probably the biggest fight of 2020 and 2019 going back. Deontay, the Bronze Bubble Wilder versus Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, is going down Las Vegas, Nevada. The implications are huge, straight up. The implications are huge. We gonna get right into it. So what's the deal? We already know we had a bout go down between these two. It took place at the Staples Center and it was an action packed fight. It ended in a draw, you know? You had rounds one through four, kind of boring, not a lot happening. Tyson Fury kind of turning it on a little bit in the middle rounds, boxing well, boxing beautifully, making uh, Deontay Water miss badly and uh, he know doing his thing looking well. But then the equalizer found its place. I want to say in the 11th round, maybe the 10th, drops him. The 12th round is a round where uh, my man Tyson Fury got his noggin caved in. Brutal right hand to the side of the head and a left hook. Uh, you know, it just has icing on the cake and dropped my man badly. There's controversy in the bout. Cats will say, oh, huh. Tyson Fury, he just outboxed him, and so he got his head folded a couple times. That's not a big deal. Okay, that's fair. And other cats will say, my man, Deontay Wilder, dropped uh, Tyson Fury viciously in the 12th round, and he got a long count. There's not a lot of times where you see uh, an official referee lean over a fighter who's unconscious and then, say, and then count in his face. More often than not, if a fighter is unconscious, you'll see a wave off, or you see it count and be more immediate, but that's controversy. The result of the bout is Tyson Fury gets up, boxes, you know, show some spots here and there late in the fight. Deontay Water probably suffers from a little bit of an adrenaline dump thinking, I just got this dude out of here. It's a wrap. Then you turn around, you look, and he's back in the game. You continue to fight, goes to the judge's scorecards, rule or draw. I'll get into some of the more of the intricacies of that here in a second. But let's look at what's happened since then. Deontay Wilder, all he's done is build his brand and make more of a name for himself. <laughs> Shout out to my previous videos. My man, Dominic Brazil. He talked a good game. There was beef, hotel lobby stuff, shit with his brother. All that happened. He signed up as the WBC mandatory and said, you know what? I'm a big, tall dude. I'm an athlete. I can take care of business. I can get Wilder out the door, straight up. Wilder took the fight. They did a great press release leading up to the bout. Pay-per-view joint. They signed up, round one, ding, ding, ding. Some punches are exchanged. You know, Wilder's putting pressure on them. Uh, Dominic Brazil's firing it back. Oh, oh, Brazil, G game over. Game over. As soon as, Brazil, as soon as Pauly Malinaji was yelling out, oh, Brazil, Brazil. Yeah, and then he was folded up like laundry. Folded. Right hand, set it up beautifully, came on a cross angle, one, two, straight yopper, and put Dominic Brazil on his bottom. Game, set, match, blouses. Shout out to Dave Chappelle. You look at the next bout that Dominic, or excuse me, uh, Dante Water took after that. Luis Ortiz, King Kong, the boogeyman of the heavyweight division. Not Dante Water, because Dante Water got a belt and you know what he's about, but you're talking about a guy who's only lost to the guy now twice, now when I get into this fight, that no one else will fight. Luis Ortiz has only lost to Dante Wilder two times. The first fight, which was a great fight, where he hurt Wilder in the seventh and then got stopped later on. And the second fight, which we'll get into right now, where he won essentially every single round into that bout and then got caught slipping with that right hand and his hair got flopped over. Check that video too. Cause when he got hit with top, when he got hit with that right hand, then his hair moved over a little bit and then it did the it did the spray thing. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like you see the chicks in the video, they got the little bikini on and they they flip their hair. That's what uh that's what uh Victor uh, not Victor. Shout out to Victor Ortiz. 
he doing dumb shit getting beat up by people. But uh, Luis Ortiz, when he got socked up in his, his, he don't even have a lot of hair. So when you punch the condensation off my hair like that, that's a clear cut victory for you. A shout out to you. So like I said, you had Dominic Brazil. That was opponent one after the Fury fight. Then you have Luis King Kong Ortiz in a rematch that was competitive the first time. And the second time around, you go ahead and take care of business and get him out of there viciously. Pretty much, I mean, you were losing rounds. You pretty much lost every round if you're done to water. But you took no damage. He was busier. He came in in shape. He looked great. He did what he was supposed to do and then got stopped like he was supposed to get stopped. Shout out to Luis Ortiz. He's, he's still the man. And that's why casting a heavyweight division ain't really fucking with you like that because you're doing your thing. We switch sides. We go over to, you know, Tyson Fury. What has he done? What has he done since that bout? Um... He came in, he fought uh, a Tom Schwartz. Who, uh, do box rec or Wikipedia, who's Tom Schwartz and who's he beat? What has he done? That's a tune-up fight. And he treated him like a tune-up fight. Stopped him on the feet. He didn't drop him in, knock him down. He stopped him on the feet. He took a knee or some shit. Um, it wasn't even, you know, that that crazy. ESPN put it on a pedestal. Oh, my God. Oh, the lineal champion. He has no belts because he lost in the blow and being overweight. But, ha, ah, ha, ah, ah. I understand, you know, you want to prop up your, 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 your investment, but stop playing. Then Otto Bailin. I don't know. I, I only know Otto Bailin because he fought uh, Tyson Fury. But he came in, undersized guy, by uh, height standards, and gave Tyson Fury work. You think about the cut, yeah, the cut was obvious because it was gross and nasty, but he stayed busy, stayed in his face, put pressure on him, hurt him in the late rounds, 10, 11, 12, and looked great, and he ended up losing a close decision. But if you Tyson Fury, that's supposed to be a showcase fight. Before the Deontay Wilder fight, and you just getting this fucking barn burner against Otto Violin, a cat that nobody knows. That can't, that's not, that's not the best look. Now, I'm saying Styles make fights, just blah, blah, blah. Maybe he slept on him. Maybe he said that, oh, I'm going to go in here and school this bum. And this dude came to win. And you got caught slipping. But you look at the comparison and contrast, right? Deontay Wilder, first round knockout, seventh round knockout, I believe. You look at uh, Tyson Fury. He got a take knee TKO kind of dudes not throwing punch anymore he's in the shell and not giving work back and then you get and then you look at the fight with against Aldo Bailin where it's competitive it's competitive throughout the bout you get cut where your eyes flopping around you you got like hamburger meat lunch meat flopping through, from your eye and then uh you get the victory and you look like shit and Katz is wondering no oh, this is the best idea immediately after that fight if you check Twitter Katz is like oh Deontay Wilder's about to open that cut up I don't agree with that. I don't think Deontay Wilder is going to open that cut up. But I'm going to get into my prediction soon, here in a second. So with all that being said, what is my prediction? What's my assessment? What do I think is going to happen? I want to give credit to Tyson Fury and both Deontay Wilder um, for their candid nature, the interviews they provided thereafter. Deontay Wilder admitted, first pay-per-view, <sighs> Butterfly's crazy, um... The moment, fighting on that stage, uh, you know, something of that magnitude, it got the best of me. And you can see it if you go back and watch the fight. He's overextending. He's reaching. He's swinging wildly. Much, I mean, he's a wild swinger, generally speaking. But this is even beyond what he would do normally in, 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 a, in a boxman assessment. So, weight getting too far forward on the front foot. Right hand coming way over the top. It's just a lot happening there. You see in the back half of the fight, he settles in. He starts finding his range. It took a long time. But he ended up finding it. Um, Tyson Fury was Tyson Fury in that fight He's the Tyson Fury that he always tries to be Box, move well He has good upper body uh, a Movement as far as being able to avoid Get away of punches And confuse his opponents Concept of range is really good And he's a big tall guy, he's lengthy, he's long He's able to do some things that other guys can't do At that height and weight in the heavyweight division So credit to him He was able to do his thing What we've seen after that is and this is my humble opinion. Tyson Fury rely on the things that got him to the place that he's been on and not really grow and get better and show like, oh, damn, this dude is crazy. He's getting dudes out of there. He's just looking unbeatable. Versus when you look at a guy like Tyson Fury, he destroys Dominic Brazil, patient, sets his feet, one, two, right down the pipe, gets him out of there. And then having the composure to get through a fight with 
Luis Ortiz, where he's essentially losing every single round. Not like he's getting beat the fuck up and dominated or anything like that, but he's losing every single round. And then lands a perfect right hand and it's over. And when he dropped him, he walked away like, yeah, this is over. Now, this is the thing that kind of concerns me from a Deontay Wilder standpoint. Double check and make sure when you drop Tyson Fury in this bout, check on this dude. Don't let that adrenaline dump yet. That's the mistake that he made in a previous bout. So when I go to the predictions, I see this. A lot of stuff has changed from the fight that took place uh, in the Staples Center and the fight that's going to take place. February 22nd in Las Vegas. Wilder, his confidence has grown dramatically and he's believing in things that I don't even know. Even as confident as he was then, he's believing more now than he was then. Um, I think that spells trouble. And to him, for him to be so honest about, hey, I was anxious. I overreached. I was doing things that are outside of myself. He's given multiple interviews where he's explained in detail and length, this is what I did that went poorly for me in that bout. And Tyson Fury has said, I'm willing to die in the ring. If I leave on a stretcher, that's horrible, but I'm willing to do it. And I'm going to knock out, uh, you know, Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury is not a knockout artist. I mean, you take Tom Schwartz off the table where he didn't even drop him. It was just kind of like, oh, he's taking punishment. I'm returning fire. But at the end of the day, um, he's not a knockout guy. And we've seen Deontay Wilder in trouble. He was in trouble against Bermis Verne. He was in trouble against Luis Ortiz. And we know that he's resilient. So I don't know if Tyson Fury being a guy not known for knockouts is going to be coming in and, and delivering a knockout. That's not likely. But his, his rhetoric, his dialogue that he's providing is not something that's consistent with a fighter that, you know, that's, that's want, that wants to stick to a game plan. That's about what he's always been. So it's interesting to see. Um, my prediction is Deontay Water by stoppage late. So past eight rounds. Um, if he gets him out of there earlier than that, then shout out to, the, to my man. But I think Tyson Fury is a smart enough guy, um, a, a savvy enough guy, experienced enough guy to at least survive until later rounds before he starts getting battered and then hit with something crazy and he gets dropped. I just, that's what I see. Deontay Water by stoppage past eight rounds. Um... A scenario for you know Tyson Fury winning would just be boxing, moving, and running, but then you give up some points in ring generalship if you're not landing anything significant, but just running around the ring. So I just Wilder's it right now. He has a momentum. He's coming off crazy knockouts. Uh, Fury's coming off of running and fucked up cuts. Um, and questionable promotion. Uh, shout out to ESPN. Shout out to Top Rank. Shout out to um, PBC. Shout out to Al Heyman. Uh, these guys are doing their thing, but. This video was focused on the the main event, obviously Wilder Fury. I think it's a great fight. No matter who you're pulling for, I think it's a great fight. I see Wilder winning it by stoppage. Um, Fury's definitely gonna be live in there. I don't know what the I got to check on what Caesar's book looks like as far as you know what the numbers look like from a betting perspective, but. It, it's, it's a good contest. It really is a good contest. This is to determine who's the best heavyweight in the world. Shout out to AJ, but this has nothing to do with you. Whoever wins this by, bout is the number one. So that title is already over here on this side. If AJ's over here, you're just going to be over here. No matter what happens, you're just going to be over here by yourself. Whoever wins this bout, that's it. That's the man. But more videos to come because i want to cover some of the fights on the undercard because there's good ones but i wanted to dedicate this video to the main event deontay the bronze bone water versus tyson fury the gypsy king las vegas nevada february 22nd is going down heavyweight championship of the world wbc lineal champion i don't know i wanted to know you guys opinion on this whole lineal crap i know it has some weight other places i just don't know if it has weight here but that's what ESPN is touting my man Tyson Fury as a lineal champion and Deontay Wilder I want to say he has 11 defenses of his WBC title since he got it off Severn um, and we're going to see what it is this is your boy JG exaggeration experience please like comment subscribe bell icon for notifications please 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 let me know what you think about the video let me know your opinions on the fight we out of here let's go